I got oh the clap, baby. God, I sure hope not, dude. Not I mean, either. I guess it's treatable. It doesn't You're gonna matter. get any sort of STD. Yeah. You just want that tree. You want them treatable ones. You it's know true. what I mean? Yep. You just don't dude, put your I'm hands together. I'm getting fucking sick of this cord. Okay, I feel like it's just like perfectly accentuating my moob. I like, like it. Look at pull, this. Pull a little harder. It's a nice so little the, t- you want this? So you the kids can. Nice <laughs> the kids at home can see. I'm That's a jiggly a boy. Everybody knows about dude, it. I no, mean, dude, I'm it's like I'm wearing too. a fucking. It's like I'm wearing a harness. This is fucking ridiculous. I need it to just fun. get like some. Well, luckily now with my audio interface, I'll just plug that shit in there, and it'll be yeah, like right here. It'll be like yeah. It'll be you fine. Won't have to think about it at all. Too bad you still have a whole nother episode. I know a whole nother fucking day. It's pissed me off. It's so annoying. <laughs> Speaking Let's of things struggle. that piss me off, dude. Okay, so let's get into it. Last week, we had Chase write in about things that annoyed us. And oh, yeah. Like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, you went off about several things. And it's yep. like, while you were going, I just kind of got into it. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to bring up. Like, I, I really couldn't think of all the things that annoy me. Because let's uh, be honest. Too many I things. get annoyed about it's easy like, things. Like, it's, it's very easy. The question would have been me. better if it was what doesn't annoy you. Really? It would have been easier to answer, mm-hmm. if anything. Like, that one. Actually, if anything, that might have made me ponder quite a bit. Now that I think about it, that would actually be much harder because it would have been like, ah, like I I hate driving. I think that sucks. You know what's um, so great? Just existence oh, man. blows. I, I love working from home just for the fact that I'd never really have to drive ever again. It's so good. It's so good. See, I don't mind driving, but there's one thing. No, that, you do. Okay, there's, it sucks. L- there's one big issue that I have with driving is that when you are getting on the freeway, because my, my commute to work is all freeway. When you're getting on the freeway, they have to let you in. They literally have to let you in. But for some reason, they're like, nah, nah, no, no, no. You even have a to bit. find a way. I'm not going to make a gap. I'm like, bro, I'm going to ram you. <laughs> what do you what kind of scenario do you think this is in which you do not have to move so I can get in this fucking thing? It's like I and I hate it the most is when like you're you're neck and neck with the car and it's like, OK, and they start to dip back and you're like, all right, I'm getting in front. And then they go Wah! and they get in front. It's like, can you just die? Like, for, I'm going to be real here. OK, you're pissing me off. Can your tire blow up? Like, I'm fucking sick of you. All right. Damn. But. Another I'm, thing that assume, annoys me. I assume that wasn't the thing you were going to talk no, about. No, <laughs> the driving just, thing got me on that and it really safe? pissed me off. No, nah, the thing that really annoys me is, okay, so I started my classes again okay. on uh, on Wednesday and I'm going to class and everything. And there's a couple things that really annoy me about mm. college. Like I'm going to be real. One is the whole like, oh, plagiarism or plagiarism is one thing, but cheating is another where every teacher's like, if you get caught cheating, you're going to get in trouble. You're going to get an F or whatever. Yeah. I'm going to be a hundred percent honest, dude. Like 90% of quizzes. I just go to Quizlet. Like I'm like, fucking let's do, let's do this, whatever. And here's the thing. If a teacher is so lazy that they would just copy all of their tests from another teacher and they literally get paid to do this, why should there be an expectation that I don't do the same? Like if a teacher is going to cheat, then why can't I cheat? I don't understand. They act like there's some sort of like they have this higher ground and based on morality. They're like, oh, I didn't do. It's like you copied your fucking lesson plan. Shut the fuck up. Leave me alone. Like, I don't care. And there's another thing that really annoys me about teachers. And this is like you got to love the podcast or basically just to air your grievances. It's It's great. It's really what we do here. Yeah. Josh is like, uh, okay, I'm not Catholic, but he's basically like my confessional. I'm pretty sure priests would hate me because I'd pop in there and be like, one, don't don't touch me. And two, like, uh, I got to tell you about all the shit that annoyed me this week. That was a pedophilia joke. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> so- you could also get a therapist. <laughs> it works too. Yeah, but I'd have to pay for that when this is entirely free. It just uh, takes up our time, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, right? not, it's not free for me. I, spend, I know, right? You're like, maybe I should start charging you. Uh, yeah, dude. It's been 150 <laughs> episodes now. It's time for you to pay up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, like, here's the other thing that annoys me is that last last year I had a teacher who was, like, in the audio industry, you have to teach yourself so often that that is how I'm going to run my class. You will teach yourself. Nope. And it's like, in what world should I pay you? To make me teach myself. Like, I don't understand that. I got that very same teacher for another one of my classes. And I was like, there's no way that this man can do this again. 
There's literally no fuck. He did it again, dude. The second we get in this class, he's like, this is the first time I've taught this class. Uh, so we're all going to be learning together. And I was like, don't you fucking oh dare, bro. <laughs> I was like, do not fucking say it again. I swear to God. And I, wow. this class is required for my degree. So I have to take this fucking class. And I'm like, Fun. oh, my God. And there's no other and professor? There is another professor, but they do not teach on the day that I need oh, it. Like, I, I need to take classes on Wednesdays. Yep. And this specific teacher is the only one who teaches it on Wednesday. And I'm like, oh, dude. Well. Are you fucking serious. And he was just like, see, my role in this classroom is to just guide you. To, to give you a little bit of, like, a little bit uh basically to counsel us into making mm. the best thing possible and i'm like actually i think the reason i'm paying for this class is that you'll fucking teach me how you, to use these programs mofo you pay like, it's for, not that complicated you paid for a guy to tell you to google search is basically yeah it. I, I paid for a guy to tell me that my stuff sucks and then i should google a video literally he gave us an assignment that he then told us he was like okay so we have this discussion board and uh and a guy like raised his hand he's like there's like overlays and stuff in here like this is video editing how like what is exactly the the thought on this like this is a multimedia storytelling class mm -hmm. which i find legitimately hilarious because it doesn't seem like we're going to be doing that at all but <sighs> this guy like raised his hand and asked this question he was like you see i'm not expecting much with the exception of uh, that you Google and do YouTube to figure out how to make overlays and, and how to make uh, good transitions and all sorts of stuff. And then he kept breaking us into groups. And in these groups, I was basically just like, okay, like here's the editing software that you can use to use these transitions. You could do this. You can use MS Paint to create overlays if you really don't, if you don't have like Photoshop or anything. Like good basically God. it was just like, he was ba he was like, just ask your fellow students. And I'm like, uh, if anything, they should be fucking asking you, bro. Like I'm not getting paid for this. I'm yeah. paying for this you should be the teacher now apparently look you I got fucking this. hate college you dude. should just be I'm a teacher be just stop stop all this this craziness of trying to get into the games industry or trying to make videos or whatever the fuck you're doing just be a teacher and just nah, fucking... the second they see my jerking it to jigsaw thing they'd be like nah, nah. i don't know. i actually included that clip in the video that i did for that class i'm oh, not that's even good. joking good <laughs> that way they'll know they'll be like this guy There's needs also... business He's yeah, it. exactly. Granted, I, I took away the audio because I was like, oh, it's just meant to be like a visual aid. But I was like, you can clearly see what I'm doing. Jerk like, gang yeah, I'm just like, <sighs> so whatever, dude. That's a good way but to yeah, start this episode. I think I fucking hate college. I got to be honest. I think I hate it. Um, Or maybe most, just this teacher. I, I, You just have a bad setup here. <laughs> like, I think you're just I really the wrong, think so, yeah. the wrong area. Because you're always going to get, like, you're always going to get a bad teacher. Like, that's yeah. kind of the thing. But there was a lot, like especially in mine, like, honestly, undergrad or, or anything below, like when you become super specialized in something is just utter garbage. Like I slept my way through my bachelor's degree. And then when I did my master's, everything was like kind of like a wake up call. Cause I was like, I'll just sleep through everything again. And I was like, well, oh, there's a lot more work. And like, I need to actually pay attention to this shit. And so, but it was like, it was so much better because it was like this small cohort of people you were always with. You knew all the teachers like it was just so much better. It, and they like they had actual doctorates and knew what the fuck they were doing. It wasn't just like, hey, you got to they yourself. actually taught you. Yeah, they actually teach you. So uh, do you wonder how think. many people listen to IndiePod that don't know that you have a master's degree? <laughs> like how many people are not like this guy? Like they don't know that you're so well educated. They're just like, yeah, you like pops on every I'm just now a, and then they talk about some weird shit. I'm just a character, man. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Hello and welcome to IndiePod, an indie games podcast, your weekly source for all the indie games news you need to know. This week we are bringing you two awesome indie game news stories. I mean, one of them is, is interesting, the other one is disappointing, but we'll get into it. Of course, then we're I like to head think they're both disappointing. Really? You think so? <laughs> that that first would you find disappointing? Oh, I, just I don't mean, care I'm about the it one who I'm the one who doesn't like Stardew Valley, and I find that interesting. But all right, all right, whatever. We're gonna hop into news cram, talk about a whole bunch of new stuff because, of course, Gamescom has been going mm -hmm. on. It's a kind thing. of. 
It's weird. Maybe. It's weird. We're then going to hop in to God Bless the Crowd, talk about a 2D action platformer over on Kickstarter. Answer your Littner. Littner. <sighs> Littner. Dude. Litmus. I'm just, one day I'll have a stroke on this podcast and it'll be like, it'll be prime, dude. It'll be like, it's choice time to have a stroke is right yeah. on this podcast. Because I got to keep it going. before we get in to any of that, I would like to introduce myself, Von Hyde, alongside my illustrious co-host. Oh my God, dude. dude are you having a stroke right fucking, now? <laughs> Can I just die already? Dude. All right. My illustrious right. co-host, the biggest of average Josh Boys. How you doing today, big Josh boy? I'm doing well. Fucking I can actually talk, die. so I'm doing better than you. It's nice. <laughs> How I you hate doing, it buddy? So much, what's bro. wrong? I what's hate going it. on? You I don't even know. Did you wake like, up I, late? Like, what's going? What's going on, buddy? You need no, some I actually. I'm, you some I good fe- sleep. I feel very productive today. Okay, Ooh, because I I dude, woke I up. Not. I took a shower, and then here's here's the thing though. I fucked up because I did this in the wrong order. I woke up, I took the shower, came down, and I got my shit ready for Indie Pot. I was like, okay, I got to make sure I run up the dock, whatever. And then I was like, I have so much time between now and recording. I'm gonna mow the lawn, and so Ooh. I started and I, I got my lawn. Look mowed. at this I was like, house Fuck owner. Yeah. I know. I felt pretty good. There was a dog poop in my front yard, and I was like, I don't have a dog, so <laughs> somebody's. House is what if be it's that guy? Down? What if that guy came and pooped on your lawn? Maybe, He's maybe. Like, my mail's not here. I'm gonna show you. You know you what's who's interesting? Boss. Since you bring that up, my friend over playing D and D the other day, he did say he was gonna poop in my front lawn. Uh, I wonder if he did it. Uh, maybe that's maybe yeah. that's a boy poop. You Bo- know, role playing as a dog. It happens. Or maybe it's that root, that fucking chicken that I see all the time. Have I talked to you about this? I have no idea what you're talking about, but sure. All the time. Like, I'm 95% sure that I'm having some sort of, like, the world is ending and I'm searing a spirit animal because I fucking see this chicken all the time. Like, in the weirdest, like, it's the same chicken. And it just shows, I don't know whose it is. Like, I'll look out the window, chicken. I'll drive down the road, chicken. I'm turning around corners and shit, chicken. Like, dude, where's this fucking chicken coming from? I have no idea. I don't know, but this brought me down a disgusting rabbit hole of wondering if that could be chicken poop, and I needed to know what chicken nah. poop looked like. It definitely look it. does it's not gross. look like, yeah. It doesn't look like it. it. Yeah, it, it just looks like fucking soup. It looks like clam yeah. chowder. It's weird. It's, it's real Bird gross. poop looks weird. Yeah, it's gross. It's it's like vomit, but from the bee hole, you know? I mean, yeah. isn't that what Actually, I don't is? even think they have bee holes. I think they have like cloacas or some shit like that. Like, Let's not get into this. Birds are weird. Let's not talk about it. So let's get into some housekeeping. This week's developer interview is with. Ooh, you real fucked me on this one, Big Josh boy. I I think it's Sergio Ronchetti of Fallen Flag Studios talking about their games, their game Eldest Souls. Did I? Do you think I said that correctly? uh, I think it was Ronchetti. Motherfucker. But okay, it's so close that enough. <laughs> he, I, from what I remember, the, they weren't as crazy about getting it right. Most people don't really care, but like, <laughs> they seemed exceptionally chill about it. They were just like, they're "Good like, job, it's fine. Like, it's a name." Yeah, it's like every time I say my name is Vaughn, and people be like John, and I'm like, "Like John, but with a V," and they're like, "Oh, so Vaughn, like V O N," and I'm like, "No, no." But you could spell it however you want. Like yeah, like it's not gonna, it's not gonna be. It's not like you're working on my governmental documents. Like, there's nothing legal here that you need to be a part of. So, like, you can do whatever you want with my name. My license just says VLN. <laughs> VLN, <laughs> like, close it up. How's that happen? <laughs> uh, that developer interview is going live on Wednesday, the first of September. Ooh. What does that Time mean? Time just flying by. Oh, okay. Josh Boy. Time just flying by. So be sure to check that one out. Then. Since you're on your computer already, you just see you chilling or whatever, head over to our Teespring store, pick up some shirts and stickers, head over to our YouTube channel and make sure to subscribe to IndiePod where you can watch these videos, watch our clips, and eventually we'll probably do some more stuff. Leave us reviews on any site in which you could do so. Specifically, iTunes helps us out a lot, gets us in that algorithm, gets us going, helps us spread the word about indie games. It's so good. And lastly, thank you so much to all of our amazing patrons that give us any amount of money. You're absolutely fantastic but we got to thank those three dollar tier and higher so ethan a gamer for fun john just john just john baby 
We'll see. Mixomatosis, AK Mix, Zach Durham, Chase Hopkins, Philip Brunchow, the one better of Australia, Chris Penwell, always drinking tea, Josh Nichols, AK Active Josh, and Sam Fillion from Canada. Thank you all so much. You're all so amazing. And let's talk about what we've been playing, Big Josh Boy. You have been playing what I believe is a divisive game because I've seen several people on Twitter being like, meh. You're playing 12 Minutes by yeah. Luis Antonio. Please mm-hmm. tell me about mm-hmm. it. Tell me all the sneaking little details. Really just spoil it for me. You know, you got, I'll spoil it for you. There's No, that's a joke. There's, Don't do that to me. There's quite a <laughs> quite a big twist at the end there. Uh, one that I didn't really care Is for. Your I, I'll say an alien. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it comes out of you. Whoa. And then it tries to uh, steal your wife. And well, is it like that scene from Men in Black or Men in Black Two where like he's he K is like trying to get the the alien baby and there's like the Cthulhu thing and he's getting hit against the car. There's all these crazy tentacles and shit. Is like is that what happened? Right, exactly. But with time You're like, loops. Specifically, it is a yeah. uh, it is like a little nod to yep. Men in Black. That's it's true. Of, you the nail on the head. Will right Smith. There. He <laughs> bursts open through the door and he just starts beating you up. It's crazy i don't know why people don't like it it was great what's what's insane is like with this celebrity cast i would not be surprised if Will Smith i know. actually did was in um, this fucking game so the last minute of the of this conversation has just been bullshit none of that is real 12 minutes is a interesting mind. game that uh well, actually the one thing that is real i didn't like the twist at the end um <laughs> 12 <laughs> minutes is an interesting game which uh is all about time loops and it's very very much an homage to older point and click games. And what I mean by that is if you're, uh, I mean, it is a point and click game unless you're playing on a controller and then it's just like awful. This is That's not, what I've heard. This yeah. is, yeah, this was not, I, oh man. So before we talk about the game, I played it on a controller stupidly because I tried to start it up on Xbox first and I was like, okay, I'll play it for a little bit. And I was like, this is terrible. And then I had an already installed copy on my computer and I went to my PC and I go to play that and it like, the data synced up, just like crashed it. And it was just like, nah, we don't work on PC. And I was like, <laughs> well, fuck. So I can't like, do that. I guess I get the shittier experience. Yeah. So then I played it on my PC on Xbox Cloud Play, and I was like, fuck you, I'm still going to play on my PC. I'm going to do a cloud version of it. So I played the cloud version, and the cloud version is like, you need a controller. And I'm like, oh my God, yes. I was hoping that happened to you. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I just have to be stuck with this shitty controller version. So it was that's I, awesome. I mean, that was obviously a bad piece to it. Like I, the, it is not optimized for a controller at all. Like what you have to do <laughs> is literally act like the controller is a mouse. So you have to move it and like click and like drag things with a controller. Like it's awful. That's it is just awful. Um, that aside, a lot of this is a really cool experience where you are trapped in this house and you have uh, roughly 12 minutes, uh, as, as they say. I think it's actually 10 minutes is the, the story to it where things keep restarting for you. It's not real time. It's game time 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, but what you're doing is the basic premise is you are coming home. Your wife is talking to you, uh, will come uh, out of the bathroom and will be like, oh, blah, 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 start talking to you about, hey, I've got this exciting news. I won't talk about the news. Um, and then at a certain point in the, the night, a guy kicks down the door and is like, hey, this is the police. And then he just starts like attacking you too. And he like puts you in handcuffs. And then uh, he's like, where's the watch? Where's the watch? Blah, blah, blah. And you're like, I don't know what the fuck is happening. And then the wife won't tell him where the watch is. She's like, I don't know where the watch is. And you don't say anything because you're just like, ooh, watch. And so then <laughs> the, the cop guy is just like, all right, you don't know where the watch is then. Blah, and then just kills you. And so he goes and like starts choking you out because then the woman is like, OK, fine, the watches. And then you uh, get killed and you like start the day over. And you're right That's back at that same. Up. Yeah, it's really fucked up. <laughs> My wife even said she like I had beat the game, but the next day she thought I was going to play it again. She's like, can you not play that game? Because I'm tired of hearing that guy kick the door <laughs> open because you are constantly playing the same scene where this guy yeah. is coming in and just murdering you. So it, it does get a little bit to a point where you're like, all right, fuck this guy, man. And he's like, he's built like an ox. Like you take a knife at him and he'll still be like, nope. And he'll like swipe you and then just like punch you and you're dead. And you're like, well, fuck, what do I do? So yeah, so he, it's made to be 
like that. And there's a lot of things that you could do. Like I, I the game is really, really smart about having so many different things that you can do and try to play with. And it, it gives you that feeling of like one more, uh, the same that you could attribute to like a roguelike where you, you know, you play a run and then you're like, oh, I just want to do one more. It, it does that because you have this short span of time that you play in and you'll try something out where you'll be like, oh, maybe I could use this knife to kill him. And then he punches you and you can't do it. And you're like, okay, all right, I can't use the knife. All right, maybe I can hide in the closet and then jump out at him and get him. And oh, you can't do that. Like, like there's all these little things that you keep trying to think of. And then you go into, you know, other rooms, you're looking through items all within this time. You're trying to talk to your wife and like explain like, hey, I'm in a time loop, like help me. And the, the wife is like, you're an idiot, shut up. And so you just kind of have to deal with it and like, little by little piecing together things of this story of like what this watch is of who is this guy that's trying to kill you of uh just a whole bunch of strange things that are happening uh it's really cool i definitely enjoyed the versatility and like the variety of like trying different things like there was a point where i was like all right maybe i'll just stab the wife and the game was like the game even even tells kind of like is like don't do it because you go to like you sure you you, you go to do it and he's like there's no turning back after i do this (laughs) and so it doesn't let you do it and then i was like well but do it though and he's like all right and then he just stabs her and i was like well that was pointless (laughs) what if like time didn't reset then and you're like i guess i'm just a murderer yeah there was there was a moment in in the actual like the the game that kind of paints to that picture uh which i thought was interesting but it's it's very much a an old school point and click adventure game because this game does literally nothing to help you like there's no hints there's no like pushing you into a direction the most you get is there's items and if you inspect them he'll sometimes say something like what am i gonna do with this and it'll give you like a little bit of a clue and then the rest of it is like just put things on top of things and try to fuck with anything that you can until it makes sense. So like it can be if you're not paying attention to something or you just don't think of something, it can be frustrating at times because you're just doing the same thing over and over and over again without any meaningful results. Like I only looked up a guide once because I just did not understand where to find a certain item. Once I did that, I was able to, but it was like one of those things where I had had enough and I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna look this up. And then from there, I was able to run through it on my own, but it was just having that, I can understand why some people can get kind of like meh on it. Um, And just from a story perspective, I think it was kind of, convoluted it like at the end i was like i get it what they're trying to do but also some of this just makes no sense i i can't speak to it other than like play it and you'll find out and yeah maybe you don't you'll like, like it. Spoil it yeah i don't want to i don't know it. i've i've had a lot of people on twitter be like don't play 12 minutes because of like it's it's story content because of like the violence it shows and all sorts of stuff and i'm just like I'm not a fan of like telling people not to do things just because you have like an issue with it. Yeah, I I still think it was good. I liked the fact that it was so there were so many different things you can interact with. And there's so many ways that you could try to like figure out what you're supposed to do next. And and like it was very much a, a murder mystery in a lot of ways of like trying to unravel this mystery that is happening and you uh you know you do get that rewarding feeling when you when something goes right obviously like it it can be frustrating at those moments where you're like stuck but like once you get it you're like oh okay now i can go into this next rabbit hole or you keep finding little things um one of my favorite things is there's a a portion where you get a number for a insurance company and you can literally there was an article written about this because i even looked it up because i was like i'm not going to spend all my time doing this if it's not worth it (laughs) but there's an article where you um you can call the insurance company and it's constantly on you're on hold and it's like it plays elevator music and is like our our representatives are all helping customers we'll be with you in a moment and i was like i wonder if anyone ever uh, picks up but they don't it's just like you can just spend the whole 10 (laughs) minutes just like on the phone waiting through customer service can you barricade yourself (laughs) in the house you can so you can lock the doors um and he will he will break them 
But you can't like push furniture up. I know there's furniture no. in this fucking house. There's furniture, That's but so you dumb. can't you can't barricade. Because I've heard that you can call the police. I've heard yes, that it allows you, you to call the police, but they say they'll be there in 15 minutes. Yes. And it's like and it's like you, just fucking put shit in front of the door. Yeah. Like what I yeah, that was one uh, buy of my, yourself the extra couple minutes. One what of do my, you mean? One of my ideas was like maybe I can I can stand the 15 minutes, but then you this is kind of spoilers, but like eventually you'll get to a point where it'll like time will go on long enough and it hits that 10 minute wall where you still get pulled back no matter what and you're like what the fuck oh, like why am i here that's interesting so like it's okay. not just about dying um it's a little bit of a spoiler it's light spoiler but there you go dude still- i fucking i love time loop stories i'm not even joking it's my favorite shit the only thing that has kept me from playing 12 minutes is actually the adventure game stuff because i've heard it like very much goes into old school adventure games where it's like oh you've got to get this and you've got to get this you put it together you get a weird yep. result like yep. a lot of people would be like like how you get a lightning bug and like a tube and you make a flashlight and you're like how the fuck am i how so, am i supposed to know how to do that so like, the thing is it's not as, some weird stuff. it's not as uh exaggerated as other like like island uh monkey games like the secret you island sure hope so yeah yeah it's not <laughs> as only exaggerated. so many things you could have in your apartment <laughs> No, it's more like, you know, if you have this uh, this specific item, you can open something or you can, you know, uh, interact with it in a normal way that you would in the real world. Like you would use, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to give spoilers, but you would use something if you wanted to, like, open uh, you know, uh, something like a jar or something to the nature of, and like you can't do it with your hands, you would use some kind of utensil, right? You would use some okay. kind of object yeah. or some kind of tool to open that, right? Like that's the kind of thing you'll get from this game. You you don't have to like, it's not like, oh, I took this flashlight and I put it on a stick and now I've got a torch or like some weird kind of like bullshit that makes no sense. And you're like, oh, now I can burn the guy. Like that, it's not like that. Can you leave the apartment? So... An- another <laughs> spoiler but no you cannot you are stuck That's in the stupid. apartment <laughs> so okay whatever you so you don't get into spoilers i will i won't ask yeah. you to give you more can't, but you would can't you recommend leave... people play i would recommend it i think i think okay. you should still check it out it is a small enough experience that i think it's worth still trying because i feel like you know this is very much a uh, a spectrum where you have a lot of people who like it you have a lot of people who don't like it you don't know where you might fall if you're into like those older adventure games and kind of like uh, really pushing yourself to think about like, hmm, I wonder what's going on. I wonder what would uh, work next. Like, this is a good game for it, I think. Um, I I still enjoyed it, even though I thought the story was not uh, interesting to me and was kind of like, like I liked most of the story until the end twist. And I was like, that wasn't necessary. <laughs> like, I just didn't like it. Um, but that being said, like other people might be really into it. I still think that it was a good experience. Um, and it's like I said, it's, it's a short enough one where I was able to do it in a day. So it's not uh, a, an extreme investment of your time, if that's a worry of yours. Right. I've seen a couple articles that like, oh, Hideo Kojima says that 12 minutes makes him want to make an adventure game. And I'm like, that is legitimately the worst idea do not like yeah. Hideo Kojima makes weird ass just normal video games let alone a game like a, a a genre of games that's kind of known for being exaggerated and hyperbolic and yeah. a little bit fucking weird like Hideo Kojima would be the person to be like oh yeah this tiny little bit of sand that's here is actually yeah. the key See, to that's, everything like, that's that's the reason why I wouldn't want that is because you have someone who's going so far-fetched that logic doesn't make sense and these games are like rooted in you need to use logic to get to the yeah. next point right like I would just hate that so much because I feel like yeah the one thing that Hideo Kojima does not bring into his gameplay is logic and yeah. it's like nah dude uh, so what I've been playing this week, I've just been playing Psychonauts 2. I haven't really found a whole lot of time to do anything else. Apparently, Josh found so much time that he beat this fucking game. It was a good he game. He beat both 12 Minutes and Psychonauts 2. What? I spent, I spent every night uh, from the day that it dropped, spending about three or so hours uh, at night just playing by myself playing some psychonauts and it was great this dude okay, okay i won't talk much about the game because i know we're gonna yeah. talk about it later we're gonna do a book club and we don't want to like spoil it for everybody right but, but go ahead this is my game of the year really i find it okay. hard 
that anything will beat this. I know that I'm biased because Psychonauts was like one of my favorite games growing up and I'd still have a lot of uh, just extremely well thoughts about the game, even though it hasn't aged as well from a platformer perspective. But like this game, its story is so good. The And in general, one of the big lacks from Psychonauts 1 was the platforming and like actual combat for it could get a little like clunky whereas this one i feel like is really well done there's some minor issues here and there with certain things and i, I hate having to remount <clears throat> my powers every five minutes I, i'm like dude yeah i i will stop. say i wish there was a little bit of a, a better way to use your powers where they could have done it differently yeah there's but, like three powers i constantly use so i always keep them on and then it's just like okay this one fucking slot like you i never swap. use pyrokinesis i gotta switch that one it's like so annoying yeah but the actual like when you're in combat there's so much more variety from a, a gameplay perspective like i think they did uh this really well like i said i know i'm biased but i find it hard that something's gonna beat it for me Okay. All right. So you know what? Everyone has been saying like the nicest stuff about Psychonauts 2. And I loved Psychonauts. I oh did you ever play Rhombus of Ruin? No, because it, it was a VR thing, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like I a couldn't... PlayStation VR title and just VR in general. Yeah. I find it so odd how often they reference that because like people talk about how it recaps it, and I'm like, I do not think it adequately recaps Psychonauts and Rhombus of Ruin. Like, I don't think it adequately covers those to bring this shit up that much. Like, if if they didn't like in every conversation bring up the Rhombus of Ruin, I wouldn't find it so weird. But mm. they do all the time hmm. and i'm like bro how many people do you think played this obscure psvr title i mean i like, think that's why many. they're doing it right they're like rhombus well, of ruin rhombus so. of ruin i yeah you'd think like maybe it would be to get people to like pick it up or play or whatever but having an additional peripheral to do that like it's a big buy-in yeah, to play this sure. game so you'd think like i i get kind of skimming over the first game it's like whatever that one is a little bit easier to skim over you don't really have to get into like the fucking cuttlefish like getting into his brain and being godzilla being a kaiju like you don't need to get into that but i feel like with the rhombus of ruin they just skip over so much of that they're like oh mm -hmm. this guy got kidnapped rhombus of ruin we got him back he's still asleep and i'm like you so uh, granted keep playing the game and you'll like, i would imagine you like, yeah you're able to piece uh, a lot of the the missing parts together where it doesn't matter as much um yeah because the like where psychonauts one i and i'd have to play it again but like i feel like they really doubled down on the story for two of like weaving oh, everything together from like things that just like I don't know. They did it in such a good way. I, I don't want to get too too deep into it, but I think that from the Rhombus of Ruin uh, concept or like the, the argument on that, I think that it doesn't matter as much with what comes in the latter half of this game. OK. All right. OK. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not very far into this game. Another, I guess, like issue I have is how often this game talks to you like you're a toddler. And I find it legitimately hilarious that it's like a child's cartoon. And it's specifically with Lily, the character of Lily, how often she's just like, Raz, maybe you should burn these portraits. Maybe it will show you something. And yeah, I'm like, there, there's bro, a lot. are you fucking serious? Like, I get, like, in that portion, it's like a tutorial, and I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Maybe it'll, maybe it doesn't happen. And then later on, the same thing happened, and I'm like, can like I, you stop? I get it. And yeah, yeah, I've had several people bring up, like, how amazing the performances are, and I'm like, you're really just going to ignore that? Like, it's not good. <laughs> it's, it's really annoying. Like, I actually despise that. And there's a, a time in which, like, not really a spoiler, but when you're on your first mission, there is, like, when everybody kind of comes together and you're like, all right, there's a point at which a person says, hey, Raz, remember when I taught you how to grind? And I was like, I've never had a fucking conversation with you before. No, I do not remember that in the slightest. Like, what are you even talking about? You were not present for the first game. I met you literally like 30 minutes ago. Why would you fucking say that you taught me how to do something? Like <laughs> Raz is an acrobat. He's known how to grind since the first game. Nobody had to teach him. And they're like, I oh, remember when I taught you that. And I was like, no, <laughs> what, did I miss something? Like what the fuck? <laughs> but yeah, it's just a bunch of like weird complaints aside. I'm actually really enjoying the game. I think it's a lot of fun. I, uh, 
But yeah, I'm I can see there's like two twists that I can already see coming. That I'm just like, I I already know what you're gonna do, dude. Like you just uh you will t- don't want to get too into it. I'll talk to you after the show mm-hmm. or whatever. But for sure. Let's get into our first news story then, since we've already covered our uh, games we've been playing. Our first news story is over on IGN. This one's written by Jared Moore, and it is Stardew Valley is officially an esports. An Woo! esport now, I e- guess is what e-sport. it says. E-sport. I just said esports, but that doesn't make any sense. So whatever. Multiple sports. Eric Barone, the creator of Stardew Valley, has officially announced the Stardew Valley Cup, meaning that the famed relaxing farming simulator has now become an eSport. The Stardew Valley Cup will pit four teams against each other, Sandy's Candies, Pierre's, maybe? Pierre's Cherries? I don't know what that is. Maybe? Is it supposed to be? Sure. Whatever. Pam's Yams and Corbus's Crocuses. What? What? The four teams will compete against one another in the cup on September 4th, where they will compete, uh, complete a range of tasks to earn points and a shot at almost $40,000. That's a good chunk of cash. Damn. Yeah, that shit's crazy. The competition is being run in coordination with uh, Unsurpassable Z, a YouTuber known for creating content about the game. In a video on YouTube, Unsurpassable Z explained that they had come up with a list of 100 different challenges that the team will have to compete in the cup or have to complete in the cup. Each completed challenge is worth a varying number of points with Unsurpassable Z has calculated and assigned it based upon the difficulty. Each of the teams, basically there's like, they have a certain amount of time that they have to do this within this tournament. Um, They all know about the challenges beforehand with the exception of, I believe, five Mm -hmm. different ones that are actually being kept a secret so that they can strategize beforehand, which I think is cool. They have a couple of different things. So like the challenges uh, range from completing tasks in the community center to reaching floor 100 in the skull cavern. So there's like a bunch of different stuff that you have to do. Big Josh boy, you earlier didn't seem interested in this at all. How do you feel about it now that I've uh, talked about it a bit more? Hmm? Um, Well, here's the thing. I think it's cool. I love this idea. I love the idea of bringing this community. I really think it's uh, a large prize pool, which that's exciting, especially for yeah. those teams. I just don't care about Stardew Valley. Like, and that's not to say this is a bad thing, right? Like, I love the idea of this. I love uh, possibly other games doing this kind of thing, but I just would have no interest in watching this. But I mean, granted, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Like, maybe I'll, I'll give it a go and see people competing because maybe it's different. Like. You know, when we, I think we had like a very similar conversation when Stardew Valley was in the talks of uh, like, a, I think it was a GDQ, a Games Done Quick, where people were speed running it. And we were like, you can do that, like very confused. And I feel like this is very much the same type of tone where it's like, I think it's awesome that people figured out a way to do this. But, you know, good jelly, not my jam. <laughs> Yeah, I think it is kind of interesting that it is this like crazy tournament for a game that you wouldn't think would be competitive. I think right. that's that's really really cool. Um a couple of things that uh, like I, has it does it say in here how long the tournament was? I initially thought it was meant to be like a week, um but then it says unknown tasks across the coming weeks. So, I I don't really know exactly how long this tournament is is supposed to be Mm. um but in any sense i think this is really cool i i think it's like a great way to reward a community for like really i guess i like being stalwart and giving a shit about your game enough to the point where like they know enough about this game to be competitive right i think that's really cool like i think that's awesome uh granted i wonder how these people were chosen Like, how are these people, these teams chosen? Like, that's what I think is interesting is like, who gets to be like, like, it's really cool that people are competing for the 40 grand, but like, why are these four teams the ones competing? Yeah. Like, was there a bracket? Like, did they have to succeed in regionals before they went to like this tournament? Like, how exactly did this all work? That's, that's a very good point, especially because like 40,000 bucks is a big deal. It is a big deal. I could Oof. I could use that. Maybe I'll get into Stardew Valley. I'll start. Yeah. yeah. I could I could use Forty Grand. Game, anyway, good uh, good game. No, I like, yeah. like I said, I think it's super exciting from uh a standpoint of like I'd love to see this uh 
it's cool that it's happening there, but I'd love to see it done in other facets. I think the idea, like I love esports as an idea. I think it's uh, very cool and it interests me a lot more than regular sports, just me personally. Um, but why not? I mean, if you're really dedicated to uh, a game and you want to build a community around it, like this is the kind of awesome things that people can do to keep Stardew Valley alive. I know that there's no time, uh, no point in time that this is going to die uh, as far as like anytime soon. But like this, especially because it keeps being updated. Because it keeps being updated. But like this also brings that longevity to the game without even giving updates. It's just, it's still in talks of like people just being like, you know, this thing's an esport. Like, what? That's crazy. Yeah, and that might get more people into it. They're like, oh shit, I like Stardew Valley. Maybe I'll like compete. Like if this becomes mm -hmm. an annual thing, that would be really cool. Right, for sure. To, to see how this goes. And I wonder like if they're going to televise it in any way. Obviously, I'm not talking about like the small screen. I'm just talking about like maybe doing streams of people competing in this or just anything to where like to make it, I guess, a real esports experience where you can actually kind yeah. of like you can watch and well, you yeah. can be part of it. I would I be, really know. that would be such a missed opportunity if they did not do that. Like, I think it would make yeah. sense for it to be a couple of uh, commentators. You would have the four panel screen that shows each team and what they're doing at any given moment. And then if they had a real like production team going through this, they would have like a live stream of other people that are actually playing it and be able to like do like side by side shots or or like jump to their picture and whatnot. Like I don't know how how uh, intense this would get, especially since this is the first one, especially since they're just putting like dipping their toes in the water. But like that would be incredibly uh, just you would miss out on so much if you were just like we're doing this tournament and just no one gets to see it and then they're just like they won. Yeah. Like, yeah, what? to your point, I don't think that this tournament could be something that continues unless you tell Unless you do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, you you have to, like, give people the option to actually watch this if you want it to become a reoccurring thing. Because yeah. if you want it to actually be, like, an eSport, one of the largest parts about sports in general, but eSports is the viewership. Like, people have to be able to watch it. Otherwise, you're just, I don't know, fucking, what is that game? Like, what is this game? You know what I mean? What is this game? I don't know. Are you a it's monkey? What soccer, are you doing? The people. This oh, is the little uh, soccer people. <laughs> You're talking about um, oh, foosball, foosball is what it's called. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, what is this yeah, game? What is this? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah like, uh, you know, it's like, is that ladles? Are I got ladle and soup. I got is broken, this is... uh, broken, you know, fucking wrists. What am I doing here? <laughs> Like, I don't, I don't know no, what you're trying to do. Otherwise, you're basically just like playing pool in a basement <laughs> or like some dumb shit. Like if nobody's watching, are you really playing a sport? Like, you know what I mean? Which sounds mm, really stupid, but it does whatever. It's uh, that tree falling. It forest. sounds very condescending, but uh, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. We'll just, <laughs> we'll just move on. I do think I, I do want to end this saying like it is really cool that this is becoming sure. in any way an esport, becoming a tournament. The fact that anybody can make money is super cool. But like Josh said, it would be a big missed opportunity if they did not televise this. Uh, so moving on to Kotaku, which I think this is actually like maybe the third time in our 150 episodes we have ever had an article from kotaku so that's kind of interesting but this one is written by luke plunkett i believe is how you say that name um the sure. luke part is not hard it's just the plunkett part i do have to get that out of the way the luke is like luke like whatever uh steam's two-hour refund policy forces horror developer into indefinite absence so i do want to thank uh i forget who it was in our discord actually brought this up to us and was like hey so uh, we philip like, you guys should talk about this. What's it feel? All right, there you go. The Wombat Ember of Australia. He's, he's fucking, he's chiming in with great questions and he's chiming in with great topics. Let's do this. Uh, so, Amica Games, the lone developer behind games like recently released Summer of 58, has decided to leave game development for an indefinite time. After two, uh, after Steam's two-hour refund policy resulted in a huge number of returns of their latest title, Summer of 58 released last month and has been well-reviewed on Steam with an overall very positive rating and loads of fans leaving nice comments giving uh, practical praise. Yeah, practical praise. Uh, to its atmosphere and jump scares, but... As a short experience, it can be completed in around 90 minutes. 
that's uh, that's left the game vulnerable to Steam's blanket to our re- refund policy. The policy which lets any Steam user get a full refund on a game if they've played it for less than two hours means well, and if you were only nine, 90 minutes into like basically longer games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Crusader Kings, it wouldn't really mean anything. So I just want to kind of like go through this because this is not the first indie developer who has nope. actually had an issue with this. They say uh, when before your eyes ran into the same situation. So this is like smaller experiences have had this happen in the past specifically uh amica games went to twitter to i believe twitter to uh put out this little bit of a press release i guess they say friends thank you for your support i'm leaving game development for an indefinite time to collect my thoughts the fact is that my game summer of 58 does not reach two hours of playtime by steam standards in this regard a huge number of returns on the game even with positive reviews and i do not earn anything to create a new game thank you very yeah yeah they they didn't earn anything um i am very glad that you like my games but since i have no conditions to do something out something new i have to do something else i will immediately answer yeah immediately answer anyone who asks about i'm assuming their their upcoming game but they don't have any plans to continue it in the future because they don't have any funds to continue it right big josh boy how do you feel about this and and i actually do want to ask you I guess in a sense, like everybody loves to toss blame. So let's play the blame game. Who do you think is at fault for situations like this? Do you think it's like the, um, the onus falls on Valve and Steam for having this blanket return policy? Or do you think it's the players who, in a sense, like take advantage of it? Which I should say, saying take advantage has a negative connotation. But in reality, it just means to use something to its fullest. Right. So, well, removing the negative connotation there, like who who do you think like... I guess should be a blame. I yeah, I think I think it's hard. But whatever. Right, for sure. I think it's hard to to put blame to like to point fingers at just one entity in this situation. I think it's both are yeah. wrong, right? I, and I think that's pretty obvious from like the the people who are doing this obviously should should not be doing that. Like I get if you don't like a game, but I think it is pretty messed up if you're like I enjoyed that experience. That was really good. I want my money back. It's like for what? What are you doing? And like I get it that like. You know, some people are, uh, you know, a little Money's bit strapped tight. for cash, right? Right. Yeah. But then, like, maybe have some empathy for the people who are doing this and also might be in the same situation and being strapped for cash. Like, um, and and there are things like this game is on sale right now and it's only like seven bucks, which really isn't a lot. Granted, you know, you could say like, oh, well, seven bucks for only like less than two hours of content. And it's like, well, you go to a movie and it's like a lot more than that. Yeah. So, like, I don't think that's a good argument. And then if you take it from the Steam perspective, you say, oh, well, they should fix this. And it's like, OK, well, like, let's really sit down about this and, and think this out, because it's hard, especially in the day and age that we are in, where you can't really equate an indie game to one specific thing. Like there's like when people it's we've talked about this, when people describe an indie game, everyone has a different opinion on what it means, because it has blown up into this thing where an indie game can mean uh, Senua Hell Sacrifice, and it can also mean a game like Minute. And you're like, those two are wildly different. Like, they're, yeah. it's so hard to compare those two, but you can, and you can put them in the same bucket as an indie game. Um, and when you get to that point, you then get into a struggle of like that two hour window is uh, an issue. Um, and, and but at the same time, it's hard to just justify like, oh, well, this is what we do. We have a different rule for indie games because it's like, well, that doesn't you still have the same issue. You still have. I should say, I, I don't think that the the issue should be fixed by like doing it on indie games. I honestly think like my, my solution to this problem would be the developers when they post their game on Steam, they have to list an average play time, like how much, That's how long it takes to play your game. And then Steam bases it on that. So if your game is only 90 minutes, you have 30 minutes of play time or whatever. Right. Like right. it basically just a certain amount of time within that. So like you can get through 10% of the game, 20% of the game. And then, cause I feel like that's a good amount of like, that, that's a good amount of time to like, see if you're into a game yep, and sure. that would, 
I guess the same thing would apply to these large games, but then at the same amount of time, like you'd be like, okay, my game is 90 hours. That means that somebody could probably like, if you went the 10 or 20% rounds, like they could play for fucking like, they could play for like right. 10 hours yeah. and be like, I'm well, what you would, so, what you would do is like, you would say 10% of the game up to two hours, right? Like that would be the way yeah, you build that system, which I, yeah. I really like that idea because that kind of went into my whole point of like, there's an issue between trying to delineate these two different games that could be wildly different. If you just say like, oh, well help the Indies out. It's like, well, it's not just to help yeah. the Indies out. It's like, you could still, like, we don't often see it, but you could have a bigger budget title that is only an hour or, you know, two hour experience, what, what have you like, we don't often see that, but like that could still exist. Like if they put all of their heart and soul into a smaller project, but just has a bigger budget or has crazy graphics, like the same thing could happen. It, it's not just an indie issue. It's an issue with smaller titles. Um, yeah. I really like the idea of doing the the 20% to or 10 to 20% or whatever is a, a portion of the game. Cause I think that makes sense. Cause like that is yeah, just basing it on the amount of play of time play time. the game has. Right. Yeah. Because that is uh, ultimately what I've like, because I've used the return policy before and it's because I've Same. played a game and hated it and been like, this is not for me and gotten rid of it because I was like, I, I have no interest in this because it doesn't like I thought it was a different game than what it was either advertised or like I just made a mistake. And like, I do think that Steam should still have that policy in there. I don't think they should get rid of it completely because I think there is yeah. a use case for it. Right. There's those use cases where I don't think someone should just be stuck with a game that they have no interest in but in these cases where like you literally leave a review and say like great game and then go like i think that like that right there should be a piece that is like taken out like if you left a positive review for a game like it seems really weird to be like great game i really enjoyed it give me my money back. i want my money back. like that part yeah. just blows my mind and like I guess an argue, argument could be made that like it's good because at least they're getting positive recognition and like adding to those numbers. But like also, why should you be able to do that? Like it just seems really strange. I yeah. I don't know. I um I think it's kind of kind of a, a weird issue, but I think that what you suggested is a great step in the right direction. Like I don't think you're gonna change people from finding loopholes in things yeah. like that's always going to be a thing that's what people do people break things but like having more of a contingency plan in it's set up where you're saying well here's our average time here's a percentage it's always based on a percentage and it doesn't go over that two hour period then you can get away with that or adding something to the nature of you know uh, you put a positive review, although I, I like yours better. Like I think both could be in there, but I think yours would make more sense because there's people who could just not leave a review then. Right. That's another easy way to just get away with it. Um, Plus I feel like the playtime thing could be easily automated. Like it's, right. it's, yeah, it's for sure. something immediate. Like yeah. basically the developer would be like, they put I in a time on play testing yeah. and everything that it will probably take you roughly 20 hours to beat my game, two hours to right. beat my game, whatever. Like developers, as far as I Here's know, the thing. and I've heard developers know roughly the amount of time that it takes to beat their game. For sure. If you just mainline it. So like they would just be plug this in and it's done almost independently through Here's like the an algorithm. Here's the thing, and I just thought about this. We're 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 ultimately putting the blame on the people, right? In, in a lot of ways, right now, we're saying like they're trying to break the system, right? And well, I think I it's know, mostly no, on I know. Steam, if I'm being honest. No, no, but... no, no, no. But I'm saying like we're doing that because people will break the system, right? Oh yeah. This could also be like our new idea of like, oh, Steam should do this. Could be uh, taken advantage of from the developer side, because now you'll get people who are like, I'm just going to put ten minutes and fuck them. You can't return my game. <laughs> Right. Like, yeah, there's there's uh, two sides to this that that you could ultimately see. But I think that it's probably better to have it the other way, because I feel like from a developer standpoint, like you could complain to Steam and Steam could probably shut that down because they're like, hey, these times are wrong versus getting yeah. involved with other people who are just like, yeah, they're returning it like there's not much you could do. Um, but I, 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 I lost my train of thought, but like. I th I mean, there's always going to be people who take advantage of a system. Yeah. Like it's it's just how it works, and I'm not even necessarily faulting people for doing so because like 
we get fucked like as just consumers or as somebody who lives outside of the one percent you're constantly being shit on every day like everything (laughs) is built to be destroyed everything falls apart basically everything is stacked against ever sure yeah like in reality that's how it is like the rich get richer the poor kind of just stay stagnant that's the way the world works right now and so i'm not faulting anybody for taking advantage but uh, like Basically, I, I think the the thing is like you just gotta try to make it to where the least amount of people take advantage. Yeah. Granted, for sure. developers versus consumers were definitely giving the developers a little bit more credence, yeah, like you said. Of course. But it's also just like the amount of people, I would assume. Like the the uh like I would say that the consumers are a majority of people over developers. I, I don't think that that's necessarily like a crazy thing to say um because they're like yeah there are thousands of people sometimes that make a video game but like if your game sells millions of copies obviously there's there are clearly more a lot more than people there are developers yeah like it's yeah. i just it's like wh- who's more likely to game this system probably, probably. the consumers and i 100 percent understand why not faulting anybody for doing it there's just more chance for it there's more Fucking opportunity yeah there's yeah, more chance for it so for you sure. gear it toward that like you said developers could game the system as well yeah because i are just, always gonna try it i just don't want to like i i really like the the percentage idea because i just really don't want them to do either you know one way or the other of like steam says like we're not doing shit it's two hours right which probably will happen anyway oh um, yeah they're, probably, I, just they're probably just gonna ignore this but i don't want to see developers do um the the idea of like adding useless fluff to their game to hit that mark so you're like yeah it's it's a two and a half hour game now so that you're not able to return it but it's like an hour of that game is just garbage where you're, they're just putting something in to make the experience longer which it's like yeah well that's great but that's not a good experience now it's like bloated right so i just i feel like yeah, there's a lot of ways we lose with yeah this. longer experiences don't necessarily mean quality it's, it's sure. very possible that like you can have a transcendent experience with a one hour game or like this is the same argument with like novels versus short stories is like a lot of people think that short stories have a little bit less merit in in like the literature community because they aren't long like yeah. it takes like you, you can't really get consumed into something, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they are worse in any way. It's just a more liberal use of your your time and words, which I think is really interesting. Like you could tell an amazing story in an hour to like like you said, movies do it all the time. Mm-hmm. So like I definitely I, I see your point. Yeah, there's there is like another side to this where if like nothing changes, it's very possible that developers to be proactive make more fluff on their game and it's just gonna like hurt their game yeah ultimately so i hope that doesn't happen i i really hope that steam is just like you know what fuck it like let's do this ratio thing let's let's try to make this like blankets are always terrible people fall through the cracks and it's like with with this blanket granted i think people like a minority of developers are being hurt by this because like i think the majority of developers do make titles that are longer than 90 minutes or or longer than 120 minutes or whatever but sure. still you can always change it just that little bit more so it's like even less people get fucked yeah and i don't think it would honestly like be too hard to do yeah but that's me just not understanding exactly how any of this works like this is this is all just coming from a point of ignorance where it's like yeah we think it's not hard at all but like i don't know how to fucking code this could be extremely difficult to do and like Mm-hmm. I yeah, but you but figured I, out the two hour policy. No, so I, I think, think you can figure this I, out. I think it's granted there's obviously work that goes into it, but it's not nothing yeah. is impossible. Like this could be done. And it yeah, it, like even from an opposite side of of length, like there's times where there's games where I feel like two hours isn't enough. Like that's kind of like there is some truth to be told with this ratio thing. Cause you have certain games, like especially I'm looking at you fucking JRPGs where they're like the first two hours are cut scenes of bullshit. You don't care about. And you're like, <laughs> well, fuck now I can't return this game. Cause I found out three hours in that I hate the combat. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely does blow or games like uh games that actually download an external application. Like, so what I mean is like a lot of MMOs do this where 
your game that's being downloaded is just the launcher for the yep. game. Mm-hmm. And then when you open the launcher, you have to update. So you'll like, obviously this is only for paid MMOs and stuff like that. So like Elder Scrolls Online does this though, where it's like, if I purchased Elder Scrolls Online at full price, I think it's like $30. You spend $30 on this and you like, by the time you get to play and find out if you like this game, you've far exceeded the two hours with just updating the game. So it's like, whatever because that counts as playtime in steam's yeah. book which really sucks because you have the application open you have the launcher open but it's like i can't close it because it has to fucking update like yeah. this is how i play this game bro like it it does really suck yeah but ratios yeah. all the way i think that's it i think it's a good way to change it i really do but moving on it is time for us to hop in to news cram. let's get crammed News Crams, our weekly wrap-up segment where we the hosts of IndiePod and Indie Games Podcast cram you full of all sorts of indie games news. This week in News Cram, we have one quick news story before, of course, we hop into a whole bunch of new stuff. Our first quick news story for today comes by way of Nintendo Life where it is reported that the Asobu Indie Showcase whose focus is solely on Japanese indie games, is set to take place on September 1st at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Of course, for people who are listening on uh, the free feeds, that this will take uh, place two days before you actually get this episode. But for all of our patrons, you can tune in, you can listen to that. And this is just for, like a reminder, I guess, for the people who listen on Friday, you could check out the the highlights like i do like josh does you can probably check out like i would imagine on youtube they'll probably have a full uh breakdown of the showcase like you could probably go back and watch it so just to let you know if you want to know anything about japanese indie game development that one's going live on the first uh at 5 p.m pacific time specifically very cool now on to some new stuff our first three items in new stuff come by way of nintendo life where it's reported that top-down battle royale game super animal royale by pixile is now available across all platforms that 2.5d side-scrolling shoot-em-up valfaris mecha theorem yeah mecha mecha Therion, i don't really know uh <laughs> by enough. steel mantis is headed to the nintendo switch and pc via steam sometime in late 2022 and the deck building game the amazing american circus by clabater clabat clabater i don't know uh and juggler games is heading to the nintendo switch and pc via steam on september 16th now over on twinfinite where it's reported that slice of life fishing rpg moon glow bay by bunny hug is headed to xbox one and pc via steam on october 7th and that stealth game serial cleaners this is a sequel to serial cleaner i almost fucked up it was just like like i initially just was looking at serial cleaner and i was like this game's already on console like what are you talking about then i was like oh <laughs> It's got an S, like this is the sequel. So Serial Cleaners Ooh, that's, by Draw Distance. That's yeah, going to be hard to market. <laughs> I know, it's it's a little weird. Uh, it's headed to all last-gen platforms, including the Nintendo Switch and PC via Steam sometime in early 2022. Now over to IGN, where they got a whole bunch of shit from Gamescom. So just be prepared. Normally, we have a shitload of Nintendo Life stories. This week, we got a shitload of IGN stories. Hot damn. So... Uh, now over on IGN, where it supported that turn-based post-apocalyptic fantasy RPG, Vagrus, V-A-G-R-U-S, Vagrus, I'm assuming. I don't mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Riven Realms by Lost Pilgrim Studio will soon see a full release to PC via Steam, or both Steam and GOG, which is good old games, by the way. That took me the longest good time to figure that games. out. Why people would say good old games, and I'm like, what's that? And they're like, GOG, and I'm like, oh, I can't fucking say that. <sighs> being stupid uh on october 5th do you remember this game st- no uh-uh. oh you don't remember this oh vagris is the one where it it's one of the fig games that we talked about like a long time is ago it? yeah it was it was the one developer who i think this was the first team that we saw that was doing that open roadmap for um for fig where they're like we're gonna make the game no matter what but we're just like at any point you can give us money and we'll hit milestones that things will happen Oh, that's cool. No, we actually do. That's interesting because we have another God Bless the Crowd title in the, the news cram wrap up, which I think is interesting. But no, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's that's and cool. it's all thanks to us for promoting oh, them. 100 percent. 100 percent. 
uh, that stylish single player FPS Severed Steel by Greylock Studios is headed to PC via Steam on September 17th with console versions of the game releasing sometime later this year. That action RPG Themesia by Overboard Studio uh, is headed to PC via, yeah, PC via Steam on December 7th. That party-based RPG The Waylanders by Gato Studio will see its full release on PC via Steam on November 16th. That simulation game Townscaper, yeah, Townscaper. Sorry, that, that one for some reason gets me. I'm going to fuck up your name right here, so I'm so sorry. Uh, by Oscar Stahlberg is now available on the Nintendo Switch and PC via Steam. That City Builder Simulation game, City Block Builder, that one was a hard one. I'm going to be honest. You I had it. to put Simulation Game in there because I was like, City Builder, City Block Builder. And I was like, city. that doesn't make sense. So I'm not <laughs> going to do that. Uh, by Tentworks Interactive is headed to Steam Early Access on September 22nd. That action platformer Blasphemous by The Game Kitchen is getting a new DLC titled Wounds of Eventide sometime in December, as well as a full-blown sequel sometime in 2023. That Kung Fu Brawler Sifu by Slow Clap is headed to both PlayStations 4 and 5 and PC via the Epic Game Store on February 22nd. That open-world survival craft game Valheim by Iron Gate ab is getting a new update tiled hearth and home on september 16th i would normally go in and be like oh it includes this kind of stuff we've already talked about this before but it's mainly focusing on like uh crafting house mm -hmm. building and stuff like that so my friends that one's are pretty interesting. real excited about that Re they're still playing val no, no 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 they're not they're not they were for oh, a they're long just time, gonna, like, hop but back they're into it? yeah like this is gonna okay. be the when this drops i'm sure for another two months i'll lose my buddies which is funny because like it's just crafting and house building like that's what this focuses on and like to fine tuning some stuff they're gonna hop in just for that stuff that's awesome that's fantastic uh that dungeon crawler nobody saves the world by drinks box drink box studios so sad. has officially been delayed to q1 2022 so sad Dude, i'm so hyped for this game Feel free to weep, Big Josh. I, I I've got will. a shoulder right here. You can cry on it. You can shed those tears. You can you can make me dance in other ways than one. Like Gross. let's go, Big Josh. Boy. <laughs> uh, and that action adventure game, The Gunk Speaking by Image and Form, is headed to Xbox and PC sometime this December. Which I I don't know why, but I find it so annoying when they're just like in December. Like it's like what like he's <laughs> fucking oh my god that feels now, like that'll get pushed <laughs> probably yeah i guess i guess i do enjoy this a little bit more when they're like oh sometime in december they don't nail down a specific release date so they don't have to delay it if they don't like if they need a couple extra days or whatever right. and mm -hmm. they're just not 100 percent sure i guess i enjoy this more than delaying it a couple days or a month or whatever yeah whatever uh so we've been blessed with so many amazing indie game news stories that it's time we get back to the creators in our next segment god bless the crowd this is where the biggest of average josh boys hops into all sorts of crowdfunding sites find something awesome for us to talk about and we do just so this week we're headed over to kickstarter to talk about a game called advent neon it is a hyperactive 2d action platformer uh that is being developed by cry yeah cryo gx the developers are looking yep. for twenty thousand dollars that is their goal they currently at the time of this recording have thirteen thousand one hundred and sixty five dollars with 221 backers and 24 days left to go and to get in on the ground floor you gotta pay that 15 bucks but you do get a game code and you get your name in the credits which is pretty awesome so uh, secure yourself a copy of the final game at a discount. So seemingly this is probably going to be 20 bucks when the game actually comes out. That's cool. Well, I like go. that they like immediately are just being like, yeah, you actually get this at a discount. That's sweet. So big Josh boy, how do you feel about advent neon? I think it looks cool. Um, yeah. this, this looks like a really cool retro style game. It looks like a mashup between Sonic and Mega Man in a lot of ways oh, yeah. because it's I got the that. speed of the levels that you're going through from a sonic perspective but then it has those you know you walk through some uh open doors and you have this like closed box kind of arena to fight people i like that it's a mix of like one of the big things about sonic like i love sonic but it is very much a like 
just run through and be like, I hope I make it where there's a yeah. lot a lot of just like, you know, if something gets in your way, you kind of just like, let me just try to stupidly jump on top of them. Whereas this has actual combat and you can, you know, play a little bit more into uh, your future as if you'll fail or succeed. Um, I love the the music to it. Feels very, you know, like Sonic and Mega Man, very old school classic. I think it's incredible that this is all done by one person from both a music, art, gameplay, Damn. like coding. Uh, it's all one dude who is creating this, which is nuts. A true solo developer. Everyone yeah. else is like, I'm a solo developer, but I don't make my music or my art or like, and you're like, bruh. Come yeah. On. Yeah, yeah. If you look <laughs> That's at where awesome. it says the team question mark, it's just just one dude. It's just one dude, and he says, "I'm an artist from North Carolina, responsible for everything you've seen, heard, and felt so far: art, music, animations, programming, sound, etc." So I That's think it's super awesome. cool that this is a, a legit solo uh, project. The person says even in here, like what all the funding breakdown is. They're very uh, transparent with it. They talk about you know how much is going into the backer fee stuff, how much is just general processing and taxes and bullshit, and then and what would be left based on them hitting that actual, you know, like the minimum tier goal. Um, and they're they're uh, seemingly in the know of how long this will take them roughly from a, you know, an estimated style. And they talk about kind of what that that money goes to, which is really just living costs to make it to that point, which I think is is interesting of them just breaking it down. Um I don't know. I think it's I think it's cool. I, I love the soundtrack to it. The combat looks um, interesting as far as like I, I love the the time stop thing. I feel like that might get kind of complicated. I wonder how that works. Yeah. Like I've seen it happen a couple times and I'm like, is that like a pseudo parry system? Like where if you activate it at the right time, you can do it or not? Because there is like that that part of the trailer where the character's like, oh, too slow. And I'm like, did they parry them? Yeah. I it, thought they got hit. Yeah, it looks like, it looks definitely like a parry system in the GIF images of this. I'm trying to look really quick if there is mention of specifically that it's uh, stop time and transform when you reach max power. So I don't know if it's maybe it's just a certain time but it oh, definitely it's that blue bar yeah like how you have your health is the orange bar the power is probably that blue bar right and I'm then it highlights see. that little hourglass that allows you to do it yeah so i think it's probably an ability i you guess can just use it's just it's very uh well timed where every single one of these gifts it happens when someone is attacking so i don't, I don't know it, it still might be based on a parry system yeah yeah Anyways. it is really interesting yeah, point is, it seems cool. It seems to have uh, seven districts, which are worlds, containing at least 28 levels, two bosses per district, mini bosses in a majority of the levels, uh, more accessibility and practice options, which I think is like, there's a lot of content in this, right? Like, it seems like yeah. there's a good amount in here. I think $15 is definitely a reasonable ask. Um, I don't know. I, I don't have much more to say other than like, if you like old school games, you like high speed games, combat, uh, you know, the platforming style to it, like you should definitely check it out. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Uh, in all honesty, it's not really a game for me, but one thing I really did want to bring up, like I think the game looks cool, just doesn't good jelly, not my jam. Yeah, but sure. the one thing I did want to talk about is this fucking crazy demo they have. I feel like this is probably one of the largest demos I've seen. It includes four levels and two bosses, a tutorial and a training room. Like typically demos go like you get one level, one boss. It's just to get you like roughly acclimated to how the game will feel. I feel like this is a, a fairly large slice of the game for this demo. I think right. that's really cool. Like, yeah. I really enjoy that. That just gives you that extra bit of time to really decide and hone in whether you want to like back this or not, whether you're looking forward to it. I think it's really cool. Plus, it's available on a bunch of different platforms, which is awesome. You've got it on like Steam, you've got it on Itch, or you've got it on Game Jolt. That's really cool. Uh, the art itself for this game, probably the thing I find most interesting i i really do enjoy it and i really like the conversation overlays just mm -hmm. something that i'm like kind of a nerd about but i think the game looks cool granted definitely not for me um i'm not like i love the aesthetic of sonic and mega man but i don't i don't like the games i'm just <sighs> They're not both good so good games. you're so wrong <laughs> yeah i mean i i like i really like what they look like their stories i think it's all really cool but like 
I'm just not good enough at games to play them. So I'm not even going to like fuck with myself. Nah, you could do it. I believe it. Maybe if I like really dedicated a lot of time to it, but I don't think I'd want to. Like it's just. I don't know. They seem to like, and I think too, I'm sure this game has, uh, let's see. Cause I remember seeing something about accessibility. Like I wonder if, Oh yeah. yeah no so lives that is also or game one overs I to talk about. can be put on it. So like they have ways where, uh, they can cater to an audience who might not be as, uh, seasoned when it comes to tougher games. Like, yeah, they have like crazy you. accessibility, which I think is really cool. So they have like simple remappable controls, gamepad, keyboard, and mouse support, uh, no lives or game overs, tweakable visual effects, a training room to practice in, and like it, it's just it's awesome. I think that's awesome that this this developer from the outset is doing this all by themselves and they're like, you know what? I'll put in all these accessibility features. Granted, I, I wonder like in the, uh, in the like visual tweakable visual effects, I'm wondering if that includes like color blindness settings and stuff like that. Cause I know Probably. people have had issues with this and it's obviously an extremely colorful game. Um, but I do think it's really cool. This, the game looks awesome. Just doesn't seem like something that would be for me. But Big Josh Boy, do you have any last little tidbits you want to talk about before we head into our listener questions? Uh, the only thing that I would say is keep in mind if you're interested in this game and you're not used to the practices when it comes to Kickstarter of like how quickly you'll receive this game, their estimated like delivery 2020. is 2024. So yeah. this is definitely one of those Kickstarter games where if it looks cool, you like it, give them 15 bucks and forget about it. Oh yeah, this and is then, definitely when you got to just forget about. Also, like that—that that is one thing. Make sure you give them the correct email, by the way, because a lot of the stuff with like Kickstarter is done through email. Yep. Like for my Crow Sworn, they gave you the Crow Cart and Unworthy for free, and I wouldn't have known about it if I didn't give them the correct email and check my email because they—they they pretty much do all their correspondence that way. Yep. Like I. Not often do I actually head over to Kickstarter in general, um, but when you do, it's like, I, I don't feel like they do the greatest of jobs of letting you know when you've got shit to like activity to check out. So just keep an eye on your email for updates and shit like that. If you, if you ever back a Kickstarter. Uh, so on to our listener questions. Our first listener question is from the Wampin' Imp of Australia. Philip Bradshaw writes in and says, uh, did you miss my lack of questions last week? Dude, I always miss you. You don't write in a question. I'm like, where's me? I'm not yet. So he wrote like five. I know, dude. It's like, bro, we fucking space them out, dude. <laughs> Jesus. I love, I love the juxtaposition of you being like, I miss you so much. And then immediately going like, but also fuck you for all these questions. <laughs> No, nah, it's just so crazy. Like, I guess I probably could have just held some of the questions, but in reality, Phil's probably going to write in 10 more questions next week. Like, for sure. I really wonder if Phil's like, when they just go through their daily life, they're just like, this is a good one. Just <laughs> like every day they send us a question. I, I love you so much, Phil. You're so amazing. Thank you so much for doing so. I love hearing from you over there in Australia. That's what makes book club so fun is feeling that, hearing that smooth, silk, dulcet Australian tones. voice. Yeah, it's just so nice. Can't wait for that Psychonauts one, dude. Yeah. Oof, it's going to be great. Yeah, even John said he would he would uh, do something for that one. Really? Yeah. No way. Yeah. I've, yeah, I saw that uh, Just John has been playing some Psychonauts too. He, uh, nice. he apparently just beat it and he loved it as well, so. How do you fuckers have all this time to beat this game? <laughs> what is happening? I don't know, man. It's because you go to school, you stupid baby. Maybe. Yeah. I actually, I didn't realize how much of my time school takes up until like, I mean, I started I, back at school. I, I like, fuck. just recently dipped out of that contract job. Like I finished that. So I have a lot more free time. So it's just yeah. getting sucked into to games. I, I literally, I, I was like, oh, Psychonauts 2 is coming out. Sorry guys. Got to break this fucking contract. We're done. And that's, that's how it works. <laughs> All right. Uh, Phil also writes in and says, do you have a favorite meme template? Big Josh boy, do you have a favorite meme template? I have a couple. Um, so from like an older perspective, I think my favorite was always Doge. It's really childish. Um, it's honestly just taking something that's very simple and just being like, oh, wow, such 
simple, such a uh, blah, blah, like whatever. It's it's a really dumb meme, but for some reason it's stuck to the point where yeah. I'll have to bring it on the show one day. But like I got a, a Secret Santa gift from one of my buddies who has the the shirt with a doge on it. And he's just like, oh, wow, much secret, such Santa. And I just I love it so much. That's awesome. Speaking of the doge thing, I really enjoy the uh, the like horny bonk thing i don't yes. know why i find that yes. so funny horny bonk is so like, good the like you're being real horny for somebody who's within bonk distance <laughs> like i love that shit so much it's so funny there's also like this is one thing it's obviously not a meme template but it's something that i find legitimately hilarious have you ever followed the twitter account perfectly cut screams it's like my favorite fucking no. shit. It's literally just like, it's a short, they're always short videos, like tops 20 seconds. Mm-hmm. And they just get to the point of somebody screaming and cut right as they scream. And it's just so good. It's the funniest shit to me. I don't know why. Like, I love it so much. Interesting. But yeah, the the horny bonk thing, easily my favorite meme. Uh, yeah. I love it so much. It's so great. Or like, I mean- there's the there's the good old classics like the one does not simply like yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think from like a newer perspective my favorite has definitely been the one where it's like the guy with his girlfriend and he's like looking back and he's like Ooh. oh that's a good one it's because yeah. it's yeah, uh, you could do so one. much with that one it's too good I like that one a lot uh, so Phil also writes in and says seriously it's like eight questions not even joking uh, is there anything you see that could happen that would make you quit gaming as a hobby big josh boy anything that might uh, in the future make you quit gaming as a hobby something cuts off my hands i, Ooh, like, I that would do it that would do it for You're me like i was told when i was a kid if i masturbated too much my hands would fall off so that's pretty much like i'm yeah, really looking forward to that day that's why i don't jerk <laughs> off to jigsaw really my I hands might I... fall off uh no i i think like realistically there's not a lot that would do that. I, I feel like video games are so deeply ingrained into my identity and my just my passion that it would be hard to just be like, I'm done. Um, I, I definitely have moments of kind of being like, I'm not as interested in gaming, but it always like comes back in waves, you know? And I think yeah. honestly, like the podcast really helps with pushing myself to be like, uh, to, to keep playing things. I think the real, the real thing that will probably do it is whenever my wife and I have a kid, I'm sure that it won't break me from never playing games, but I'm sure my, uh, my time will be much more limited in actually being able to play. So it'll probably one of those things where like, when I do play games, it'll have to be ones that I'm like really into. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's that was actually like pretty much like I've got I've got a roughly twofold answer. One would be like having a kid. I definitely anticipate my life like taking a sheer is that drop off is that when Indie Pod like, ends when both of us have kids? <laughs> like we're done. No, I think we're, we might still find time for it, but I doubt that what we've been playing section will be very populated. That's, it would just oh be my like, god, that's how we limit the time to these episodes. How we get shorter episodes. We just stop playing games and have kids. Then you know what I found legitimately hilarious is that like we are actually having a fairly quick episode this time, but I feel like it's like with questions and shit. We're going to still take up the rest. Yeah, we'll still have (laughs) way too long of an episode. We'll use my famous quote if that's a long episode. Yeah, that's that's such a long episode. (laughs) Yeah, I think uh, probably having kids will will cut down, but like straight up quitting um i guess like i i feel like in any situation there would always be those times where you have like a little bit of downtime but i guess um i would assume if morgan was like ever terminally ill that would probably be one thing it's like dark. probably have to like yeah i know right like if if like because that would be the shit that would have to get me uh, to to show you how integral gaming yeah, is yeah to like our personalities it would literally take my significant other being terminally ill or like if she god forbid actually does have als like if any of that kind of stuff ever happened that would be the thing that would cause me to stop playing games but even then i feel like 
everyone says like being a father there are like those times you just had to find time to game and stuff like that mm. i feel like there would be times that you could yeah um, and i mean and then it maybe then i'd it, read a book or watch a sh- tv show i guess yeah because like it goes through different waves like where you're able to with a child at certain ages introduce them into games and like it might take off even more because then they might be into it right and then you have that yeah. bonding moment where you get to play that with them and and i've heard people who have kids and talk about it and how like it honestly kind of sucks in a lot of ways where like I, I can see it being a terrible moment of playing with kids even though you're like i like that i'm playing with you and i'm i'm you know having that moment but like from a gaming experience you're like this isn't as fun as it could be because like you're really yeah have you ever down. played a game with a kid it fucking Dude, sucks so when i play with like, my niece especially <sighs> when i play with my niece my my uh brother-in-law and I, we play together. We play Super Smash Brothers. We literally mm-hmm. have a fake controller that we give to her and uh-huh. put a computer on the screen and have her play. And she always picks Princess Peach, which is, fuck that bitch. But <laughs> Princess Peach will play. And she just, she's getting to that age, though, where she's like, where she starting she's to realize starting to that realize that, that not- like, it's she's not- like, I think my Joy-Con has drift. It's not going the way I want it to. <laughs> yeah. But for the longest time, we've just been like, ah, play on your purple controller. Like that doesn't match any of the other controllers we're playing with. You're giving it like you guys have the joy cons or the pro controller. She's a fucking like a mad cats PS2 controller. She's using, she's like, she's weird, using an okay. old, an old purple, like one of those candy see through Xbox 360 controllers. Oh I would love this like Ed 64 controller. You're like, how would that even work? <laughs> It's okay. The kids That's don't awesome. Know. Nah, playing games with kids fucking suck because they like they like in reality they're never good. Or when you're going against them and like Tekken, they bush in, they button mash so hard that they just destroy you. And you're like, how? How is this possible? <laughs> like I know I'm not good at this game, but how are you so good just by pressing miscellaneous buttons? This doesn't make any sense. <sighs> yeah. But I hope that adequately answered your question. And lastly. Phil also writes in and says, congrats on the 150 episodes. How many episodes did you honestly think this podcast would last for? And have can, you learned anything of value over these 150 episodes? Can you so answer Josh, Can you answer this one first? Because I'd love to hear what you think on how many how episodes. How long I thought yeah. it was going to go? Here's the thing. I've started a lot of podcasts, never thought they had an end. I've, I've, I've started and canceled a lot of podcasts, and I've never thought they had an end, really. Like there was never a thing where it's like, okay, we'll end this at a hundred episodes. Maybe it'll last for 150. I never actually have an end date for any of them. It's just things come up in the middle or you're just not satisfied with the product or anything. Like I, I, when I, when we joke about this going on for a million episodes or whatever, maybe it will, (laughs) maybe this will end at 200. I really have literally no idea. It is as long as big Josh boy will do this podcast with me that is how long this podcast goes. Like, that's really what it ends up with. If you would have dropped off like everyone else did, Indie Pod or Indie Incursion would have lasted five episodes. Yeah. But you didn't, and you stood with me. So there you go. Like, I really have no end date. Like, not even joking. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. I, how long did you think? It was? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, we talk about this whenever people ask us, you know, how did we get started? Where I'm like... I just kind of threw my hat in the ring and then, you know, I was like, whatever, we'll see. Sure, I'll be on a podcast. Like, this was never something where I thought we would be doing this still today. Um, this has been a long run, um, but it's it's definitely been one that I'm still passionate about. Like, that's one of the things, like, I, I thought that this would be something that would last no longer than a year. Right. And then really? it would probably just kind of tap it, <laughs> like taper off. And I think honestly, yeah. we it would have if we didn't start to pick up steam around that point. Right. Like, I think that if we yeah. had abysmal numbers, we probably would have been disappointed. And like, granted, our numbers aren't the highest. Like there's people who blow us out of the water for sure. But oh, yeah. we still have, you know, a, a fairly consistent listener base that is um, obviously appreciated. Thank you for anyone who does listen. It's amazing that anyone <laughs> fucking puts up with us. Um, but like, I thought that it would just eventually be over, uh, and it's still going. And it's why I talk about like, fuck, I signed up on this horrible contract of just being trapped <laughs> in indie pod world. I think, I think if I had to say something that I've learned, uh, anything of value over the 150 episodes, I'd say that, um, how fucking weird Vaughn is. 
Um, it's, de- <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely one. Um, but but uh, for like a real answer, um, I think the one thing that I've learned is honestly just um, a lot about uh, from a perspective of the industry. Like I've learned a lot when it comes to what's happening in the gaming world and like you know, we talk about indie games all the time, but really I, I had just played a lot of indie games. Like I didn't know anything about this world. I didn't really like look into that. And one of the things that I love that this show does is it pushes me to stay on top of things and to be a part of this. And granted, I've, I I still am pretty lax when it comes to like talking or, or being a part of the community, but I still always try to lurk and make sure that I know what's going on in this world. So I think the one thing is really just keeping up with games. Like that's one of my favorite things about this podcast is it pushes me to like still be a part of this world because I do enjoy it, right? Like it, otherwise I might just, you know, like if we didn't have these, I probably wouldn't look at these news articles. Like I don't actively like go and read news articles all the time on games. I just, I see things on Twitter sometimes and I'm like, oh, that'll be interesting. But like, you know, when it comes to this, esports thing for stardew valley like i would have never in a million years found this out until like maybe it was on twitch and i was like what the fuck is this like and it's and it's cool like granted like we talked about it's not my you know good jelly not my jam but still i like to hear that these kind of things are happening in the world that was a way too long answer but that's my answer nah you're good uh so for me like things of value i've learned over 150 episodes josh has made he's made fun of me for like really just coming at him and and i guess loving him so much because of that one thing that's just like josh is gone like let's talk about him but like one thing is like what i truly value in a co-host like i've tried several times to to get podcasts off the air and everything and like really what i've learned from this is is one how to do that and what to expect in a co-host like what i need from a co-host to continue doing something that's what i really feel like I've learned from all of this. And like one thing that I feel is really understated in the industry and, and people don't really understand how much this is a part of success is consistency. Everybody says it, but I feel like most people are just like, Oh, it's really not, not being consistent, putting out that consistent, not only like staying, like putting it out the day that you say you will, but also the quality has got to be a consistent quality, like over and over again. For sure. It's that's the, those are the two biggest things that I have learned in and come out of this. And, and also not really like something that I've learned, but like one thing that I truly value that I've gained over these episodes is like all of the friends I have made because of this podcast. Like I yeah, never sure. would have met Josh before and I have an amazing friend because of that. I never would oh. have met Jacob. I never would have met Chris. I never would have met Josh. Like there's so many people that I never would have met. I never would have met any of our awesome patrons. Granted, I say met, I've never met any of them, but like I've never, but, yeah. I never would have spoken to yeah. any of these people. Never, never would have known that they existed. If for sure. this podcast didn't exist. And I'm I'm truly grateful for everything that it's done for me. 150 episodes is a lot. Yeah. It's really a lot. It's kind of like, nuts. Like I, I said it on Twitter. I was like, it blows my mind that this is a thing. That one, yeah. it has gone this fast because seemingly it, it feels like just the other day that we really started this. And like in two, just the fact that we've kept up with something yeah. for this long. It's kind of spooky. Like it's, it's weird that it's just part of the routine. Like every week I'm just yep. like, yep. Putting stuff together. This is uh, indie pod, the three it's yeah, it's, it's crazy. I, I love doing this so much. It's, it's so much fun and I still don't see an end date. I really don't. So there you go from, from start to finish or start to here. I've really never thought about an end date for this. So there you go. Uh, Dennis obsessed polygon, AKA obsessed polyglot writes in <laughs> and asks now that it's, now that Stardew Valley is becoming an eSport, I wanted to ask, can you guys think of an activity that is not competitive in and of itself, but that you would excel at if someone were to turn into uh, turn it into a sport? Big Josh, well, you had something that you thought that I would be yeah. good at. I want to know what it was. Uh, it would definitely be binging like movies and shows. Oh, Dude, that's a good one. I would be so good at it. Yeah. (laughs) Like, it's spooky. There have been those times where it's just like, oh, 
uh, whatever, like Netflix is wanting people to watch like a thousand hours of TV or whatever. And I'm like, this should be my job. Like, yeah, let's dude. fucking go. Every I time- should do some weird ass social experiments that's just a binging TV shows because I can yeah. do that shit. I know you could. Because every time, I feel like there isn't an episode that goes by, although this one was one but there's not an episode that goes by where you're like have you ever seen this movie and i go no and like <laughs> like i don't know why you ask anymore you're just always you ever see that one thing and i'm like nope no, i don't watch things like i just don't know what you're talking about yeah that is that is a fairly good point o- outside of that um like i really don't know of anything that i would like i'm good at to the point of like a competitive nature i i guess dude both of us i feel like we could compete for bubble butts just saying <laughs> like no augmentation like no no squats or anything just that natural that pure bubble butt i feel like we could compete we could we could like i'm not talking about a twerking contest by the way because i feel like twerking is a skill that's tough that is that's tough that is a skill. You learn that. But I'm just talking about that innate talent of having that bubble butt. I think we'd we'd be we'd we'd, we'd be able to compete. Yeah. yeah. I was able to so quickly think of one for you, but I could not for the life of me. Like I so struggled with think this. Think of what you're good at. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, I was like, what the fuck am I good at? I and like it's kind of demeaning and from a uh, you know self esteem perspective, it's probably not good, but I was just like, I don't fucking know. Well, anything? here's the thing. It's even harder because it's like, it's like, what are you good at? Oh, like I'm, I feel like I'm decently good at Hollow Knight. I'm, I'm weirdly good at Gotham City Imposters, but they're specifically asking about things that are not, not compa- innately yeah. competitive. I was like, I, I asked my wife and she was just like, uh, I don't know, pulling weeds because it fuck it like it's you'd be it's, real good at pulling weeds it was like yeah dude it is i see them out of the corner of my, like I'll, I'll be walking in the house and i'll like look out a window and i'll see them and i'm like the fucking things are back and i get so mad <laughs> get dude, so weeds mad. are like now that i'm a homeowner i fucking hate weeds especially the ones that like in a week grow like this tall yes you're like, how is that and you're like what are you doing actually why do you possible? grow like this yeah you've always heard that like oh they're growing like a weed and you're like that's a fucking stupid it's not it's really not. The second that you purchase property and you see those prickly ass weeds that grow super tall for no fucking reason, I hate them. I hate them so much. Yeah, like I, uh, otherwise, I don't know, man. I'd, I'd love to give you a real answer, but I gave one for Vaughn, so close enough. Yeah, it's just the innately competitive stuff. Oh, I could probably com- compete in the amount of like bubblegum ice cream someone could stomach gross you know what i mean gross like a lot of people don't like the that and i feel like i could compete you know you are so gross so gross. Just saying. i mean i i feel like you could compete. this is not innately competitive but the amount of card games played you could probably you know <laughs> no. like you'll probably compete no. I could not. Um, <laughs> not at all. That's that's the thing is like, I feel like I do everything at a very like average to above average rate. Like everything I do okay. is like pretty good. Or maybe like in that middle range. Like, I don't know that I excel at anything personally. You're like, I'd be in the minor leagues of <laughs> yes. playing card games. Like not yes. in the, the actual scale of the game. Just the amount of card yeah, games yeah, yeah. that you play. You're like, I play more than the average person, but not good enough to be pro. So it's like yeah, the minor yeah, leagues yeah, right there. Sure. You know for what sure. I mean? Like, granted, I don't know anything about fucking sports. So it's very possible that uh, people in the minor leagues are pros. I have no idea. Like, I really don't know. I'm 100% certain they are, but whatever. That yeah. is the last... <laughs> bit of this question and that is the end of this episode thanks everyone so much for listening if you would like to chat with us outside the show you can do so in a bunch of different ways you can of course hit us up at indie pod over on twitter that is the most reliable source actually that's not even true go over fucking follow us on twitter at indie pod then go to that pinned tweet join our discord easiest way to talk to us we have people joining like every couple like granted it's not growing like a massive amount but i do love it because we have somebody that pops in like every week or so week Mm -hmm. and a half we get somebody new it's awesome love talking about indie games with peeps it's great you can hit me up vaughn at hive legion that's h-y-d-e-l-e-g-i-o-n on twitter you can follow my uh twitch antics i guess at twitch.tv slash hive legion i'm going to be twitch streaming again 
Granted, um, I have held off over the summer because I wanted to know what my school schedule is going to be like. I really like it's only been a week in, so I don't really know yet uh, when I will be able to consistently hit like certain days. I've been thinking about it, maybe like a Monday, Tuesday thing or something. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I will be Twitch streaming soon again. And I'm almost guarantee you I'm going to be playing New World. Because Ooh. they're having that, the, yeah, dude, they're they're having that open beta on September 9th. and I'm gonna I'm gonna check just to see if I could stream it, if my PC can handle it at a good quality, and if it can, bro, you best believe I'm gonna yeah. be streaming me some New World. This is gonna Here be some we fun go. Stuff. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Right. and of course. You can follow the big Josh boy at the underscore George 90 over on Twitter. You can follow his Twitch channel or subscribe. I, know, yeah, I think you follow on Twitch. You, you follow on Twitch uh, at twitch.tv slash the underscore George for when he does Twitch stream. And lastly, got to, of course, go through our housekeeping one more time before we end the show. Please make sure to check out our developer interview going live on September 1st. It, it is Sergio Ranchetti. I just said it wrong again, but whatever. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, of Fallen Flag Studio developers of Eldest Souls. Once again, that's on to September 1st. Head over to our Teespring store to get t-shirts and stickers. While you're over just on the interwebs, go over to YouTube. Subscribe. Maybe like an episode. Whatever. Share it with your friends. Help us out. You can watch these episodes. You can watch the clips. You can have a little bit of fun. Check out and leave us reviews on any site in which you could do so. Specifically, iTunes helps us out a lot, helps us reach a larger audience and spread the word about indie games. And lastly, thank you so much to any amount of money that we are given by our amazing patrons. But of course, we have to thank the $3 tier and higher. So, Ethan, a gamer for fun. John, it's just John. We'll see Mixomatosis, a.k.a. Mix, Zach Durham, Chase Hopkins, Philip Runcha, the one by of Australia, Chris Penwell, always drinking tea, Josh Nichols, a.k.a. Active Josh, and Sam Fillion from Canada. You're all so amazing. Thank you so much. And we will talk to you all next week. Goodbye. Bye.